Today, closely watched investor Kathy Wood doubles down on Bitcoin. She now wants to start an ETF tracking the digital currency. Bitcoin goes on a wild ride, briefly crossing under the $30,000 mark as China continues its crypto crackdown. We are long term in our focus. Keep your eye on the prize. Uh, and I do think in the short term, what has happened here, uh, one, one of the things that's happened is reminiscent uh, of the beginning of 2017 when China shut down all of its exchanges and the Bitcoin price, uh, Bitcoin's price collapsed. Uh, and uh, anyone who bought on that enjoyed one of the ma most magnificent runs during 2017. Because what we learned is fine, China shuts down and its exchanges and the activity moves to Japan, Korea, Thailand, almost seamlessly. And when people looked around and said, OK, nothing happened there, uh, uh, this just shifted. And, and we think the same will be true of mining, by the way. And therefore, mining will be more transparent uh, than it is in China right now. Uh, I think ESG is the second reason uh, that, that it has gone down. Uh, environmental, social governments, primarily environmental. How is Bitcoin mined? Uh, a lot of institutions are asking that question. Uh, and uh, ESG has become uh, a very important strategy, especially in, in Europe, uh, increasingly in the United States. And this was one more uh, risk that it was going to keep institutions from migrating into this new asset class. This is a new asset class. And from 10, 11 years worth of data, we can see the low correlation of returns compared to other assets. Uh, institutional investors have to consider this uh, because certainly their competitors are as a, a, uh, another form of diversification uh, and, and opportunity. Uh, uh, and I think this put that off for a moment, uh, but I think that the uh, spotlight on the environment is going to cause something really interesting to happen here. Uh, we just wrote a paper with Square about the ramifications of putting Bitcoin mining into a solar power world wall merchant power ecosystem so that it could absorb all the extra energy coming from the sun uh, after the battery, uh, the power pack is filled up. Uh, that would add a new dimension of economics to this ecosystem and would encourage uh, homeowners and utilities to add more solar to their own ecosystems than otherwise would be the case. So it's actually going to accelerate the movement into renewables. I think that's what's going to bring institutions back. And I think uh, T Elon Musk highlighting, uh-oh, is this a risk that I have considered adequately as I put Bitcoin on my balance sheet, my firm's balance sheet, I think he's going to uh, be a part of the solution. So uh, we think what has happened here is actually going to turn into good news. I was keeping very uh, uh, close contact with my friends in the DeFi space, particularly venture funds deeply involved in it, and uh, monitoring. Uh, and it seemed to uh, it seemed to, to to go pretty flawlessly. Of course. Uh, there are uh, some bankruptcies out there, you know, and and uh, businesses that are not going to exist. But this is the natural clearing process. If you want to take on that lever leverage, that's the kind of risk you're taking. And just know that. So I think each one of these corrections, certainly the coronavirus was a battle test. And now this one is a battle test. I think each one brings with it improvements in governance, uh, uh, but also proves out, as Anthony says, how robust this decentralized ecosystem is. I will say I, uh, we heard that some institutions were taking advantage of this 50% uh, drop in the price. They had been worried about top ticking. Uh, and uh, I think they believe that half of the 
solution is under the understanding the problem in terms of ESG and just putting a spotlight on it. So I think uh, some institutions have been opportunistic, but not very many. I think this was more of a showstopper, uh, uh, at least temporarily for, for a lot of institutions. In terms of the idea that one person's tweet could cause this uh, amount of damage, well, we've been involved with Tesla, um, you might know, for a very long time and uh, uh, we are getting used to this uh, and and use these opportunities probably just after a call with Larry Fink at BlackRock who's his number three shareholder who's all about climate change and probably set off some of this furor if I had to guess and there are also in the the top of the league tables in terms of owners of Tesla, there are a lot of European institutions. Uh, and again, very high sensitivity, probably more than Elon could have imagined before uh, he committed and his team committed to Bitcoin. On Friday, a company called Talon Energy uh, announced uh, uh, that it was doing an equity offering. Uh, it, it was going to try and get uh, $800 million done. 300 million of which would go to data centers for Bitcoin mining. This is an, a merchant power producer. And so I thought, wow, there are already companies that are starting to run with this, this model. And we know in China, the renewable uh, uh, percentage is somewhere between 40 and 60%. So again, uh, making your point. I think a bigger point that needs to be made is that progress takes energy. It seems as though any uh, uh, lightning rod involving, in this case, it was coal in China, uh, is going to uh, turn back the clock, but we really need to keep moving forward. This is progress. Uh, as Anthony mentioned, you know, to a DeFi system that does not fall apart after uh, after uh, assets are cut in half, uh, that's a pretty powerful uh, 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 source of progress, I think, from a financial system point of view. And I think just, again, the, the notion that, that uh, Bitcoin mining could actually help uh, renewables proliferate faster than otherwise would be the case, I think is going to win the day here. And that ESG will not be as much an issue uh, an issue as people think going forward. We also um, are diversifying. We, we have uh, various funds. Uh, you can find them on our website. I'm not uh, from a compliance point of view, supposed to be talking uh, very openly about some of them, uh, but it is public that we have added uh, Ethereum. Uh, uh, again, the security uh, through Grayscale um, uh, was our starting point. And uh, yes, as Anthony says, Bitcoin uh, is the safest, the most secure of the blockchain technologies. And I think that is a huge consideration for institutions, security, safety, you know, is this thing gonna blow up on me? Uh, so uh, uh, Bitcoin is the most secure, makes sense, it's the right place to start. Uh, the correlation of uh, returns very low. Uh, and it also is the leader of the pack. If you look at uh, 2017, as uh, the crypto world took off, led by Bitcoin, here again in the last six months, led by Bitcoin. Uh, Ether was uh, was very slow this time to respond, uh, but came on obviously once, once confidence increase came on very strongly. Uh, so uh, different, I think the institutions will diversify into other crypto assets, but they have to walk before they run. And I think they have to feel safe and secure uh, in the knowledge that you know uh, their assets are um, are uh, uh, are not, as I said, going to be in harm's way. Maybe the volatility is there, but uh, that their Bitcoin uh, will be there. It will not be confiscated in any way uh, that they might fear. So I think that's why you're seeing the the step first into Bitcoin, and then as a launching pad into others.